Have you ever been asked to do something that you were not empowered to do? I know some of you, I just defined your job, right? Like, like that's every day at work, huh? Like you get asked to do, but you ain't got the power to do. Look, have you ever been asked to do, called to do, commissioned to do something that you were not empowered to do? I know I have. A couple of years ago, when my grandfather passed away, I found out after he died that he had decided to make me the executor of his will. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, I was unfamiliar with it prior to that moment. Basically, it's the job of someone who is the executor to, to handle all the final affairs of a person after they have passed away. So if they, if they own anything, they have any money, they have any possessions, have any debts, you got to figure all that out. But I did not know this prior to him passing. I found it out after the fact. And so when I found it out, I had like, like work to do. But I had a problem. See, I had a problem because the way he had set it up, he had, he had made it to where I was supposed to do this stuff, but I didn't legally have the power to do the stuff he was asking me to do yet. <laughs> I had to go through a process. And, and that process took about five or six weeks. And because of these five or six weeks, I had to live in this tension of, there are these things that I'm supposed to be taking care of. There are these things that I'm responsible for, but I have no power to do the things I'm being asked to do. And it got a little tricky because there was all this stuff going on and all this craziness and I was trying to figure it out and I got real scrapped out and I got real overwhelmed because I'm being asked to do something that I do not have the power to do. Can I tell you on today, this is how many people of faith live. They feel like they have a responsibility, but no power to do the thing that they're responsible to do. They're called to make a difference. They, they have this, this commission to go change the world. Come on, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. You have this commission to live out, this work to do. But a lot of people of faith do not believe, do not see, do not have the power they need to go do the thing they're called to do. We're called to live pure. But we look at our own lives and we don't see or feel or find the power that we need to live pure. We're called to live by faith and not by sight. Come on, isn't that what the word says? But yet we don't have the power to do that. We don't have the power to walk in that faith. We're called to trust God in those areas of our lives that unique for us are difficult to trust God. Why is it like this? Why do we experience the tension sometimes in faith that we find in our occupation? I'm asked to do something that I'm not empowered to do. I got, I, got a, I got a purpose, I got a calling, I got work to do, but I don't have the power that I need to go do the thing. It's because most people, you better catch me. I know we in the introduction, but you better catch me today. Most people do not experience God on the level God wants people to experience him on. Why do you feel a disconnect between what God's called you to do and the power you have to do the thing God's called you to do? I'm talking about just living by faith in your personal life. I'm talking about walking out what it means to follow Jesus. Why do you feel a disconnect there? Maybe it's because you don't experience God on the level that he wants you to. See, a lot of us, we limit God to some distant, unconcerned reality. We can find Jesus to being a good teacher and the example of morality to people. And what we do with the Holy Ghost is we disregard him and discard him altogether. I came to inform you on today. When we speak of the Holy Ghost, he is the third person in the Trinity, the Godhead, unified Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. And if you don't get the ghost, you don't get all of who God is. And with that, I feel like it's probably a good time to say welcome to Holy Ghost Power. 
I'm so glad you're in church today. I'm so glad you're watching this sermon on YouTube, listening to the podcast. However, you're catching it. However, you're consuming it today. I am glad you're here because the point of this series is I want to connect the power that's available to the calling that you have. I want to connect the resource in God that is there, the power he wants to fill you with to the purposes he has for your life. The purpose is to live by faith and not by sight. The purpose to be able to follow him all the days of your life. The purpose to be able to trust him in those areas that are difficult for you to trust him. To do everything he has for you to do. Baby, what you need is you need Holy Ghost power. And so we're going to begin that journey on today. If you're ready, I want you in that chat right now. If you're watching at church online, just to type, I'm ready. Come on, you at the house, but you say, I'm ready. Come on, you watching this while you're on a road trip, but you say, I'm ready. Some of you watching it on an aeroplane. I got you. I say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. See, just like I told you that God has revealed himself eternally to humanity in this Trinitarian form, Father, Son, and Spirit, three in one, unique and individual, but yet unified. This series is going to do much the same. This is part one of a three-part series that we are calling Holy Ghost Power. And really, over the course of these installments, what I want to do is, is I want to fully connect you with the power of the Holy Ghost. But I must present some things on today in order to prepare you next week for the purposes that God has his Holy Ghost living inside of you for. So that ultimately you can be filled with the full power of the Holy Ghost to go do everything God has for you to do. So I hope you're ready. I hope you didn't just type I'm ready in vain. I hope you didn't just type I'm ready just because I told you to. I hope there's something on the inside of you that gets ready and that you'll make a, a decision right now. Even before we open the scripture for the first time in this series to say, I'm going to lock in for these three weeks because they're going to build, baby. You hear you here at the beginning, you hear on the ground floor, you hear in part one, the foundation of this. They're going to build and we're going to get started right now. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Would you meet me right now in John chapter 16? We are going to study the words of Jesus as he is preparing his disciples to receive and experience ultimately this Holy Ghost power. And before we get into the purposes of it, before we get into what that power actually looks like and how we walk in that power, I want to present the power to you in the way that Jesus presented it to his disciples. John chapter 16, we're going to read several verses of scripture. This is in the New Testament. Some of you have been joining us all summer long or throughout the summer, and we've been in some books you ain't never heard of. We in John, baby, John, John. John chapter 16, starting in verse 5, this is the way the scripture reads. Jesus is having this long conversation, discussion with his disciples. And then he gets to this and he says, but now I'm going away to him who sent me. And not one of you asked me, where are you going? Yet, because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Jesus is correcting them. He's like, y'all got it all messed up. You're all sad because I'm about to leave because you like me being around. But the problem is, ain't one of y'all ever stopped to ask where I'm going because where I'm going is actually more important than the fact that I'm going to leave. But anyway, nevertheless, he said, I am telling you the truth. Do not miss this. If you've got a paper Bible or a highlightable Bible, you got it open up on your phone, you're watching this on your computer, and you got to highlight this next little phrase. He says, it is for your benefit. That I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. And about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. 
when the spirit of truth comes, the counselor, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own. He will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from me what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. Now let's get some context before we start doing work today. The disciples here are very sad. And they are sad because Jesus is making it painstakingly clear that he is not about to be around for much longer. They have fully enjoyed the three years of following Jesus around, letting him provide meals, letting him pay their taxes, letting him do the miracles, letting him do the teachings. They have fully enjoyed. This has been the best three years of their life. And now he's talking about leaving. And they're sad because he's been doing everything. And what's this going to mean now? which is something I find very familiar in a lot of people of faith today. A lot of Jesus followers want Jesus to come back so they ain't got to do anything. They say they want him to come back, but really they want him to come back because they don't want to do the things that Jesus has left for us to do. Uh, they, they want him to do it. Don't leave Jesus. But Jesus actually tells his disciples, he says this, it is for your benefit. Some of y'all highlighted that just a minute ago, didn't you? You said, Whoop, it is for your benefit that he's out. But why? Why would it be for my benefit, for your benefit, for the benefit of Andrew and Bartholomew and Peter, James and John? Why would it be for their benefit that the son of God go? Well, Jesus says it's because they'll never receive the power God has for them while he's around. Understand something today. Write this in your notes as I make it clear to you. Power needs space to be seen. Power, hear me, I'm going somewhere. I got to take you on a journey through John. Power needs space to be seen. This is one of the strongest leadership axioms that I believe with all of my heart. If you're a leader in anything, you're a leader in your home, you're a leader in your workplace, you're a leader in school, you're a leader in the city, you're a leader in any capacity. You will never know who really can step up. You really will never know who's really been taking to heart the things that you've been teaching, the opportunities you've been given, until you step away and give space for power to be seen. Who's going to pick up the ball when it drops? Who's going to step in and make sure every door is closed that needs to be closed? Who's going to do it? Power needs space to be seen. Which of my kids is most responsible? I'll tell you, go away for three hours. You know, like, like it will prove itself to you. You can have a super powerful car. I'm talking about fast and go crazy. But you will never fully experience how powerful that car is if the only place you drive it on Poplar Avenue. Because <laughs> every quarter of a mile, you in a red light, or you in a pothole, or you in a red light and a pothole. You just stuck, you know? Like, like you'll never experience this power. You need some space. Somebody say, I need space. You need space for power to be seen. And what Jesus is informing them is that there is power coming to them. But as long as he's around, there will not be space in their lives to receive it because they'll just think Jesus should do it. But Jesus is leaving, not to leave them. He was leaving to create space. Some of you have places, spaces, moments. Maybe you're in a season of your life where you feel alone. Can I speak a word of hope over you right now? Maybe you're not being left alone. Maybe God is making you available. Maybe you're not being left alone, but he's creating space around you for his power to be made perfect in your weakness. Maybe he's creating space around you 
so that what can happen in you, what can happen to you, what can happen through you. Some of you had people walk out on you and you have space relationally. Some of you have had difficulties come into your life and things that were real structured. Now it's like I got all this, like I used to know, but now I got all this space of unknown. Maybe you're not being left alone. Maybe you're not being abandoned. But you're being made available for the Holy Ghost to do what only the Holy Ghost can do. For his power to be seen in your life. He ain't leaving you. He's making space for you to walk in his power. See, this is what Jesus prepares his disciples for. This is the crux of his communication in John 16, at least the portion that we have just read. And today, I want to take a couple of moments and turn this into your life and turn the realities, the truth that Jesus was speaking to his closest followers, to your life, to your following God, to your faith journey. Come on, to what it means for you to be a follower of Jesus. Because if we'll live with Holy Ghost power, there are some promises that Jesus gave us in John 16 that were true for his disciples. And friend, they'll be true for us today too. And so my prayer is that yes, you would write these down. My prayer, yes, is that you would get these notes, download the notes, pull them up in the app, get this on the inside of you. But this would be the preparation. Somebody in that chat type preparation. See, I'm trying to prepare you today for where God wants to take you over the next few installments. I'm praying that you'll join in each week. I'm praying you'll bring friends with you next week to watch online, to listen to this pod. You'll share it this week to connect people in because we need Holy Ghost power. And it's more than you ever thought it was. See, if we're going to live with Holy Ghost power, here's what Jesus promises. We can do more than Jesus did. I know we starting spicy. You're like, I don't even know if that's true. Give me a second. We can do more than Jesus did. Jesus said it's for your benefit that I go away. Jesus also said greater works than this, than I do, you will do when I leave. When I make space, even greater works than you see me do, you're going to do. Now, the problem we have is that we don't believe that. Because we think when Jesus was talking to you, he was talking to you. See, Jesus wasn't from the South. At least not our South. And so sometimes what gets translated as you, we might translate as y'all. See, if we could get a good Southern translation of the scriptures, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like give me that Memphis translation of the scripture. What well, you will find it, he said, y'all, greater works than I do, Y'all going to do. <laughs> Somebody in that chat say, it's about us. It's about all of us. See, Jesus was always limited to a place, but we can be everywhere. Jesus was fully God and fully man. And when he took on his humanity, he confined his divinity to human ramifications. If Jesus was in Galilee, guess where he was not? Anywhere else. If Jesus found himself in Capernaum, he was not in Jerusalem. He was in Capernaum. If Jesus was asleep, guess what? Jesus was asleep. He was always in a place and in a space because just like you and I are, as you, he confined himself to the, to the relegations of humanity. And so if somebody needed to be healed here and there, Jesus could only be wherever he was. But he said, greater works will y'all do. Why? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. How how can y'all do more than what the Son of God does? Holy Ghost power. Write this down in your notes today. When God's people walk in God's power, anything's possible. When God's people walk in God's power, Anything's possible. See, individually, I can only be in one place at a time. This week, I will only be in a few dozen places. You you, you go find me in in our church facility. 
You'll, you'll find me officing, working, meeting with people, handling problems. Like, you'll find me there. You'll find me in my house. You'll find me over at the Crosstown Concourse because where my son goes to school where my wife works. You'll probably find me there. You'll, you'll probably find me at a taco truck or two. Yeah, I'll be on. You know, probably a coffee shop if you stop in the right ones. You know, like, like I'll probably, you'll see me there. If I'm lucky, you'll find me at a golf course. Probably a few other spots. I think I got a, a, a speaking engagement one night. Like, you, you, you'll find me at a few locations. But that's all you'll find me at. I'm only going to have the phone conversations that I have. I'm only going to have the interactions that I can have. But think about, with all the people who will watch online, all the people who will listen to the podcast, all the people who will join us in person, think about how many places all of us will be just this week. All the schools, all the neighborhoods, all the businesses, all the restaurants, all the conversations, all the interactions, all the opportunities. When God's people walk in God's power, anything's possible. What could God do through you, and not just you, but y'all, through all of us, if we all walked everywhere we went full of Holy Ghost power, if we walked in every interaction, in every opportunity, we saw as, as being a carrier of the presence of the living God, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the scripture says, dwells inside of us. But a lot of us don't walk into our school with that mentality. A lot of us don't walk into our workplace thinking, I am literally carrying Holy Ghost power on the inside of me. We just think we're going to work. We don't answer the phone and believe that Holy Ghost power can come out of my mouth as I speak to this person who's hollering at me. We can do more than Jesus did. Because the power of God lives inside of every person who believes. And so my charge to you is the charge that Jesus was saying. Jesus was just a little nicer here when he was communicating to his disciples. Let me get frank with you. Stop waiting on Jesus to do what Jesus wants to give you Holy Ghost power to do. Some of you have relegated relationships or situations to be, God will handle it. Jesus will take care of it. <laughs> Baby, what if he's empowered you to handle it? You know, that's what I love about Jesus. You don't hear Jesus getting all worked up in his emotions about not being able to meet a need that he wasn't present for. In fact, there are only two times, at least to my immediate knowledge, where Jesus wasn't present when a miracle was needed, and he went back and fixed both of them. <laughs> Jairus' daughter and Lazarus, he's like, nah, nah, nah y'all ain't staying. Yeah, just asleep. Come on, girl. Like, but what Jesus did is he met the needs that were right in front of him. Oh, you're sick, and I'm trying to get him. Let me stop and help you. Oh, you need someone to spend time with you? I got time for you, Zacchaeus. What y'all doing? Y'all opening up the ceiling to bring this brother in here. Okay, let me just stop the lesson. I'll get you point three in a second. Let's heal this man. Rise up and walk. Jesus met the needs that were right in front of him. Why don't we walk every day full of Holy Ghost power seeing the needs that are in front of us? Say, God, what would you have me to do in this situation? God, how have you equipped me? How have you, how have you empowered me? Say, well, I'm not Jesus. Exactly. You're you. But sometimes, like Peter and John on the way to the temple, you may have to tell somebody, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. What do you have to give? We can do more than Jesus did if we'll live with Holy Ghost power. The problem is most of us are just sitting around waiting on God. But the truth is we're just lazy. We don't want to get invested. We don't want to sacrifice. But what if God wants to give you Holy Ghost power to make a difference wherever you are? See, if you live with Holy Ghost power, we can do more than Jesus did. 
That's what he said. It's for your benefit. It's for their benefit that I go away. Why? Because the comforter, the counselor, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost will come on you. Number two, if we will live with Holy Ghost power, you, somebody needs to catch this. You need to, lean, you need to lean in closer to your television right now, for real. We can destroy the lies persuading us. Let me teach. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit in John 16, the spirit of truth on purpose. Why? Because there are lies. Because clearly there were lies that they believe, lies that they wouldn't believe. But the Holy Spirit is going to come and bring truth. He is the spirit of truth. And Jesus said in John 16 that he will guide you into all truth, meaning that in that moment, they didn't have all the truth that they needed. The reason many people become intoxicated with lies, whatever those lies may be, is because we do not have the power of the truth. See, a lie is only as good as the power that it promises. Whatever lie you believe, whatever lie you hold to, only has vitality and strength and life because of the power that it promises, but it cannot deliver. That's why some people will give their whole life to a lie and never realize it's because they never trusted in the truth to make room for Holy Ghost power to defeat that lie. Can I tell you something today, person of faith, who's struggling in your mind, struggling in your heart, struggling with direct, str listen to me. The reason you believe whatever lie you believe is because you trust its power more than the spirit's power there. I'm going to say that again. The reason you believe whatever lie you believe is because you trust its power more than the spirit's power there. It's the reason you believe your damaged goods. Because of mistakes that you made, because of what happened in your past, because of what they did to you. It's the reason you believe you are damaged goods and you will always be damaged goods. It's because somebody told you a lie that said you were damaged goods and you held on to its power to keep you captive. Rather than believing that who the sun sets free is free indeed. That if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. You believe the lie more than you believe the truth. And that's why you can't fight that lie. You won't make space for Holy Ghost power. It's the reason you've decided to attach your identity to an identity that isn't the identity formed and fashioned by God for you. Because God said he knew you while you were in your mother's womb. That every day of your life was written before him in his book before one day even came to be passed. It says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But yet you believe the lie that tells you something about your identity and who you are and who you are not and what you are and what you are not. Rather than believe the truth of God about who he says you are. So you can destroy the lies persuading us when you've got Holy Ghost power. Some of you believe the lie that you'll never be clean. You're always going to have this proclivity, always going to battle this addiction. You're never going to be able to be really clean. You're just going to keep messing up and keep messing up. It may be being clean when it comes to a substance. It may be clean when it comes to your mind, it comes to your purity and what you take in. Some of you believe the lie that you will be battling that, addicted to that your whole life. And it's because you believe that lie's power is stronger than the power of the Holy Ghost to handle that. You believe that you'll never be free. You'll, you'll never live in the freedom that God promises. That's for somebody else, somebody, somebody who's had a different life, had different experiences, done different things, not done the things that I did. 
you can't see it right. In the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul gives us a list that he refers to as the gifts of the Spirit. Now, please understand, gifts, something bestowed upon. You didn't, you just, here you go, Merry Christmas. A gift, you know, of the Spirit. That the Holy Ghost will empower people with gifts. And as he gives this list, the first, this is important, the first gift he lists, not somewhere on down the line, the first one he lists, order mattered to him in this, in general, but also in this moment. The first gift that he lists is the gift of discernment. Now there are others, nine to be exact, discernment, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, faith, wisdom, knowledge, healing, miracles. But the first gift is discernment. And this can be two things. It can be knowing what God wants, being able to discern what to be done, and also knowing what isn't right, which is exactly what Jesus explains here in John 16. In John 16, there's a middle portion of this that many people, when they process these scripture verses, they probably read through real fast. Maybe what you've done before is you've You've, you've heard someone explain to you, you've read, it's like, it's for your benefit that I go. And you're like, oh, yeah, come on, he's going to send the paraclete. And then you kind of pick up at the end, and it's, but you skip over what's going on in the middle. But in the middle there is where Jesus defeats lies that were circulating in that day, and maybe they haven't stopped circulating. He says, the spirit of truth will lead you into the truth, battling, destroying the lie about sin, Righteousness and judgment. It'll destroy the lie about sin because they believed that sin was something that they had to handle. They, they thought sin was of their own accord to, to remedy rather than believing that Jesus had paid the price for their sin. He said the spirit of God will actually be the thing that guides you into that truth. He says of righteousness because some of you think that your ceremonial cleanliness is what makes you clean. And he says, it does not and it will not. He said, he'll guide you into the truth concerning judgment because many of them believe that, you know what, if bad things happen to them in this life, it was because God was mad at them. And he says, judgment is for another time right here and right now. Listen, you, you're seeing that the wrong way. He destroyed lies. A lot of us can't personalize a and contextualize these truths in our lives because we believe the lies more than we allow the power of the Holy Ghost to guide and to fight and to destroy and to help us discern the lies attacking us. See, the Apostle Paul will say this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. He says, since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. Listen to what he says. We demolish arguments. Pause, I'm reading the verse. We demolish arguments. That's not fighting and quarreling. That's more trying to build a case. That's trying to tell somebody for their whole life that they'll never amount to anything because of the neighborhood they were born in. They'll never amount to anything because, of, because they don't know their father. They'll never amount to anything because they didn't graduate on time. They'll never amount to anything because they ain't got a diploma. They ain't got a college education. It's battling the arguments. We destroy those arguments. We demolish them. And listen, every high-minded thing how many things come across your feed, come across your conversation, Luke, every single day trying to say they're smarter than God? They understand humanity. They understand the universe and the world greater than God. What Paul says is Holy Ghost power will come in you and come on you to destroy and take every thought captive. To destroy every high-minded thing that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. 
taking every thought captive to obey Christ. Can I tell you something? That's way more powerful than a feeling in a service. <laughs> See, the Holy Ghost doesn't bring a new feeling. He brings a new foundation. Folk have acted like the Holy Ghost is a goosebump. No, that's just because the air is on real good. Folk act like the Holy Ghost is whiplash. Or, or, or some, some feeling, some, some emotion, some fall. Holy Ghost, they fell on the ground. Listen. I'm all, if you know me, if you've watched up to now, you know I, you can tell through your iPhone, through your Android, I'm equal opportunity phone, through, through your whatever you got, you, you, can, you can tell I'm an emotional person. I am. But just because I'm emotional don't make that the Holy Ghost. I get emotional watching the Grizzlies. <laughs> I get emotional playing golf. <laughs> like, I, I, I get emotional cutting grass. What are we talking about? Like, I'm an emotional person. Emotion does not equal Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost doesn't bring just a new feeling. That's what some people are trying to chase. Oh, the Holy Ghost is in that service. I ain't never felt nothing like that. Maybe. Well, what he really wants to bring is a new foundation. See, it's that conviction that the Holy Ghost brings. So that you can, like Paul said, destroy and demolish every argument that presents itself against the knowledge of God. That you can fight these lies and destroy them in their persuasion of you. Why is this so important? I'll tell you why. Write this down. If you don't destroy the lie, the lie will destroy you. That's why you need Holy Ghost power. Because some of you are saved, going to heaven, living in captivity on this earth because you still believe a lie. You believe Jesus saves you, but you believe that lie is word about you on today. That you'll never be whole, you'll never be free, you'll never be pure, you'll never be right. God will never use you, God will never change you. There's no way good can come to you. You're believing a lie. And you need Holy Ghost power in your life every day so that you can destroy the lie persuading you. And number three, would you write this down in your notes? Why do we need Holy Ghost power? So that we can face Whatever happens. John 16. Jesus is giving this notice to his disciples here in John 16. Because of what they are about to face. See, if you understand scripture and even just read the book of John, just keep reading the next couple of chapters, what you'll find is Jesus is having this conversation in a larger conversation. But it's right before he's going to be arrested, tried, and crucified. He is leaving, <laughs> and they weren't ready for it. He's leaving soon, and he's trying to prepare them for what they're about to face because he knows his time is now, and he knows they're ready, but they ain't ready. <laughs> they think they're ready, but they ain't ready because <laughs> Jesus has been doing everything, and they ain't ready. Many scholars actually believe that, that Jesus was sharing these words with his disciples almost as they were on a walk. On the way to a garden we know as Gethsemane. Which some of you, that'll ring a bell from Easter, right? This is the garden where Jesus invites his disciples to pray with him. And they keep falling asleep, probably because they had this big conversation on the way. <laughs> and he sweats these great drops of blood. And he says... Father, if this cup can be taken from me, let it be, but not my will, yours, be done. And then Judas comes in with government officials, kisses him on the cheek for 30 pieces of silver, identifies where Jesus is and who he is. They arrest Jesus, falsely try him and crucify him. Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for whatever is happening. He's preparing them for living by giving them a promise of Holy Ghost power. 
See, I'm trying to help reconfigure your perception of Holy Ghost power. Because Holy Ghost power isn't for worshiping. It's for living. People think Holy Ghost power is for these moments where we gather in service. And sure, sort of, that Holy Ghost power is for when you find yourself in the sanctuary, in an auditorium, in a gathering of people. Yes, but for far too long, we have made Holy Ghost power seasoning on services. The power of the Holy Ghost isn't for church service. It's for service, church. <laughs> it's not just so we can feel something in a room. Although, baby, I pray you feel something sitting in your kitchen right now. I pray you sense the power of the Holy Ghost trying to shake you, trying to awaken you. Something on the inside of you stirring. I pray that. But if it stops when this service ends, you didn't feel the Holy Ghost. You felt me. You got moved by my movement. You got energized by my energy. Something needs to arise on the inside of you that walks out of your house with you, that walks out of this service with you, that lives in you way longer than this sermon will live, that comes alive on the inside of you and walks with you into school, that walks with you on your job, that walks with you through difficulty, that walks with you through whatever you face. That's why you have Holy Ghost power and why you need it. See, we're living in crazy times. Man, it's hard to read the news, watch the news, get the news in your news feed. We hear about stuff in our city, in our state, in our country, in our world, every hour on the hour, and it's awful. But how do they still have joy? Holy Ghost power. How are they not losing their mind? Holy Ghost power. See, some of you are thinking money will do what the Holy Ghost will do. Some of you are thinking financial security will do what the Holy Ghost will do. Some of you are thinking that a new job or a new season or a new location or a new boyfriend will do what the Holy Ghost will do. No, you better hear me. The power you need does not come from any other source but the Holy Ghost. Because that's what changes us. See, Jesus knew his disciples needed more. So that's why he warned them and then he left them. He created space. And it was bumpy for one at least. Peter. See, in that garden called Gethsemane, Peter's all bold because Jesus is there. And he takes out his sword and cuts off the ear of one of the Guards coming to arrest Jesus, and Jesus is like, Peter, Peter, Peter. He picks his ear up, puts his ear back on. He's like, yeah, da, 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 da. this is not how we do this. Holy Ghost power, not sword power. We don't need it. I don't need you. And that same Peter, a few hours later, would find himself around a fire, and Jesus is then being tried and investigated and uh, going through this kangaroo court, about to be crucified. A little girl walks up to Peter. He says, I know you. You're one of the followers of that man who's, who's about to be crucified. He's like, no, I ain't. And then somebody else is like, That's, he with him. He's like, no, I ain't. And then a couple of people are like, yes, you were. We saw you there. He said, no, I ain't. He swears and all kind of stuff, trying to show how tough he is. He denied Jesus. Three times. Because he wasn't ready for what he faced. 53 days later, on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus has been crucified, buried for three days, and then risen from the dead. After Jesus has spent 40 days with his disciples and several hundred people seeing him, Jesus has ascended to heaven and he is gone, gone now. He went away for a few days, and they, <laughs> but now he is gone, gone. And he left them instructions. You wait in Jerusalem until you receive Holy Ghost power. And now 53 days 
after he is denied his knowledge of Jesus because a little girl at a fire says, I think I saw you with him. Now he stands up in front of the whole city of Jerusalem when the spirit falls and he says, what you've seen and what you've heard is God. And you need to turn and repent. And boldness comes over him. And now he's the leader and the starter of the church. When 53 days before, he couldn't stand around a campfire and give knowledge to his love for his Savior. He was transformed. How? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. See, your transformation requires his power. I do not care the state you see yourself in right now, and neither does God. But what I know is this. You need Holy Ghost power. Oh, the Holy Ghost lives inside of every person the moment they believe. But something you got to learn with God is that there are always more. There's always more. There's always more of his power, more of his presence, more of his spirit, more than he wants to change, more than he wants to give, more than he wants to do. He has more gifts for you. He, 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 has, he has more that he wants to bring you. It's way more than you ever expected. And my prayer for you on today, as we begin this journey into Holy Ghost power, is that you would Understand why you need it and be available for more. In fact, today as we close, I want to give you a prayer that really I just pray you would walk with, carry with you. Maybe some of you would even write this down and pray this simple prayer every day. You could pray this prayer. It's four words. Could you just pray this wherever you are right now? Say, God, I want more. I want more of you in my life. God, I want your spirit to fully live within me. I want to I want to be able to face whatever happens and give honor to your great name. God, I want to destroy the lies that have persuaded me my whole life. God, I want I want to do Everything you've called me to do, wherever you send me, wherever I find myself, I want to do everything you've called me to do. God, I want more. Come on, would you pray that wherever you are right now? Just say, God, I want more. You say, well, what's he going to do? I don't know. But maybe more than you ever imagined. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for not leaving us alone, but creating space so that we could lean on you. Father, I'm praying for every person leaning in right now. Fill them with your Holy Ghost power like you've never filled them before. Fill them to overflow so that they can live. Not just experience something in a service. Live for you. We thank you for your grace, your patience, and your power in our lives. We pray all this, Jesus, your precious, powerful, and mighty name. And everybody said, amen.